Another thing that got done was uh, I got my autopilot servos and I've installed them. So the I did the elevator one first because that's much more easier access. Um, so four bolts to the brackets that were already on. Uh, it sits, and then these guards you have to fit to restrict the movement of it um, and then I've left the push rod there which we will do that just before final assembly um, and then moved on to do the aileron autopilot servo um, so that's also now in place it's a little bit more trickier access uh, just mainly just to tighten this top bracket you can see there are four nuts and um, screws with uh, hex heads that needs to be tightened and then the, the four uh, AM3 bolts that go uh, to mount the servo to those brackets again same here I left it and um, the con connection to the push rod but the push rod assembled there just left it loose the push rod comes to assembling that to the thing. The trouble is it, it will have to go in the in the middle one uh, of that. I think I can't get a bolt from that side onto the middle one. I can only get on that bottom hole of the of the servo arm itself. But I don't think that should be much of a problem going to the lowest point on those three holes. Yeah, same thing here. So that's another thing done off the list. Another little task on the list was to do to run the cable, uh, the wiring for the cabin lights. So there is a hole provided here on the on one side of the canopy, which sits on the few uh, on that center fuselage so the the routing if somebody needs to know is basically there's a corrugated pipe inside which kind of runs all the way along here comes down here goes along uh, along there so you can take one bit out here for your rear C rear cabin lights and about there's also there's also a path from here to here you can get another wire so you can put those lights together and that channel which runs from there uh, the whole pipe comes all the way up and finishes near this hole uh, where the um, thing the rear set supposed to be placed so that's where the corrugated pipe ends and so I've taken the the wire out uh, to this one so I'll close this this port here um, not only need to, need to use the rear set there and did this one is basically this too so I've put this channel across here to bring into the other side for the other um, for the other light so these two will be the front the two red lights that will go up there and so yeah it, it isn't it wasn't that bad to run the cables um, one mistake was uh, uh, put a hole through the uh, thing when I use a hole so to get that clear but I'll have to fill that with the epoxy resin, so not bad. Um, yeah, so that's the wiring done. I'll then for a, a twisted three core cable um, through this just so that it's a little bit more safe and protection and uh, noise free, I guess. And finally, it was time to bond the canopy in place. So for that, um, the seeker flex stuff I think I'd advise anyone trying this to kind of do kind of do masking tape on the bottom side on the canopy itself just so that only that little bit of where the seeker needs to go is visible so you can avoid any spillages uh, the activator doesn't it's a clear liquid so that's not an issue it's only the primer that you know that spills and the Seeker Flex itself is not that bad of material. You can just wipe that off with a, a wet cloth or something. It just wipes off. So that's not bad. But the primer, once it dries, it doesn't come off. So I didn't mask off the top part. So 
I've got a little bit of primer spillage over there but uh, apart from that it went quite well the the so this is the top line you can see I mean it's come out really nice um, again here yeah, there's a little bit of primer or spell obviously you can uh, sand that off it's not a big deal um, but if I had you know I did have masking tape or here in the end but it still got a little bit in but yeah so yeah it's a little bit of a nasty stuff the can <laughs> the, uh, the the primer and activator and all that chemicals uh, so it needs to be a well ventilated area uh, while you're doing it and temperatures um, managed to get it done when the temperature was just about 10 I think that's uh, recommended the only thing I did differently was um, the rivets the 3.2 mil rivets that go along the top line here the standard rivets are 8 mil long uh, the hardware 142 um, but when I put the 8 mil long rivets it didn't look like it would come out that fell on the other side so if I make it with the zoom in you can see how um, so I instead bend with 12 millimeter long rivets because the 8 millimeter ones don't stick out that much hardly much obviously there's a retaining strip at the back here as well uh, aluminium strip uh, along the back which sits inside the the fiberglass bit of the canopy you can just about see that there uh, it perfectly aligns every hole so that was good again all the wire wires were put in before I did that um, and they come out over here so I've separated them out uh, the two for the front lights and the and the rear cabin lights so the canopy is pretty much done um, all both door mechanisms have been completed as well um, just need to put the covers on um, obviously you first need to take them apart before getting them painted so okay and the canopy fit I'm really happy with how the whole fit went uh, it's quite nice working with this stuff and um, I had to the only thing canopy with the canopy I had to do was the rear edge of the canopy I had to grind it down so that it sits really flush and um, get that joggle all the way to the uh, to the skin uh, I didn't really have to do any along the um, the, the sides um, they were cut to size from the factory so it was perfect uh, maybe just around the rear end uh, it got close to the bottom of that skin but other than that uh, the fit was really good and now it's at all riveted and with the longer rivets as well uh, it's it's really grabbed on quite well um, and the uh, seeker flex is now set one other interesting thing was uh, I got this uh, my throttle quadrant um, got that powder coated black uh, it's come out really nice um, I think once installed it'll look really good uh, with the flush screws and the whole thing uh, black screws and the whole thing painted powder coated black so next steps for me on this are uh, avionics uh, probably still a month away from receiving the harness so in the meantime I'll probably try and fit all the seat belts in place also riveting of these uh, uh, these stops for the controls I'll have to see if I need to do that now its access is quite good um, also try and fit all the uh, rear skins bottom skins just to test fit it uh, also probably will start doing some upholstery uh, in terms of um, the center console and things like that getting the leather wrapped around it um, I'm still waiting for parts to finish the cabin heat uh, set uh, all the cabin heat items so can't do that and um, yeah and uh, I've started on the rivet filling bit I think that's gonna take some time uh, probably one or two weeks if I'm working on it non-stop um, using super fill using the method that Evan Bronier suggested using a five millimeter sy syringe uh, it works okay uh, so just time consuming so that'll be a lot of work that's next um, 
one thing I also did was the, the rear lights, um, they came in like a white cover. Uh, it was white in color. Uh, that's how they come. Um, I, in fact, the white started flaking off pretty straight away. Um, so I've scraped that whole white off and uh, primed it and painted them black. Because uh, the lights that go on the front are also black. So it should match now. So that's it for this week. Um, hopefully another update in a couple of weeks time when I have the avionics uh, harness here. Until then, take care. Bye.